Hi, this is Philip Pador, founder of Entlex RN 45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about total parenteral nutrition. Parenteral nutrition is a method of providing nutrition to the client through the circulatory system. So when is the parenteral nutrition indicated for the client? It is often indicated preoperatively if the client has a poor nutritional status. Clients with gastrointestinal problems such as short bowel syndromes, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis may benefit from parenteral nutrition. It may be given because of the adverse effects of oncology therapy. The client may be unable to eat due to nausea, vomiting, and stomatitis. Clients with alcoholisms, depressions, and eating disorders may be malnourished and in need of nutritional support. It is also indicated for clients who have had head and neck surgery because these clients may be unable to eat. Now, once the need for parenteral nutrition has been established for a client, the type of solution that will be infused must be selected. The three most common types of solutions that may be given to the client includes parenteral nutrition, which is an amino acid and dextrose formula. Total nutrient admixture, also known as the TNA, is an amino acid, dextrose, and lipid formula. And lipids provide the fatty acids for the clients. Now, the type of solution selected will be dependent on the client's specific nutritional needs. How is parenteral nutrition administered? There are three routes for administration. The first route is the peripheral. This is not the most desired route because infections risk is very high. Dextrose concentrations above 10% should not be given peripherally because they can ir irritate the vessels. A patient receiving parenteral nutrition through the peripheral route should only be on parenteral nutrition for less than two weeks. The central route is a preferred choice. In this method, the catheter is inserted into the subclavian vein and a peak percutaneous or a triple lumen catheter may be used. The third route is the atrial route. This is possible route for the parenteral nutrition, but is not commonly used. In this method, the parenteral nutrition is administered into the right atrium. Now, the picture on the screen is an illustration of the parenteral nutrition given through the central route into the subclavian vein. Now, let's discuss the rate of infusions for the parenteral nutrition. The initial rate of the infusion should be 50 milliliters an hour and then gradually increase to 100 to 125 milliliters per hour as the client's fluids and electrolytes tolerance permits. It is important to always use the pump at a constant rate to prevent an abrupt change in the infusion rate. An increased rate will result in the hyper or smaller state, and the client will experience the headache, nausea, fever, chills, and malaise. And a slower rate will drop the blood sugar and will result in the rebound in hyperglycemia. The client will exhibit confusions, tremors, hypotensions, tachycardia, and cold clammy skin. Additional interventions that the nurse must implement when caring for the client with parental nutrition include changing the IV tubings and filter every 24 hours. This will reduce the risk of infection. Keep solutions refrigerated at all times. Warm solutions to room temperature prior to administering them to the client. And if the client's parental nutrition is running low and if new solution is not readily available, use 10% dextrose and water temporarily. This is to avoid the rebound hypoglycemia. The client receiving parenteral nutrition should be monitored closely by the nurse. It is very important to check weight, glucose, temperature, and intake and output daily. Check the BUN and calcium and magnesium three times a week. Check the CBC, platelets, prothrombin time, liver function studies, AST and LT, and serum albumin once a week. In addition to monitoring the client's lab values, it is important for the nurse to monitor the client for complications. This include hyper or smaller coma. A pneumothorax, remember a parental nutrition should not be started until the chest x-ray validates the placement. Sepsis make her fluid volume overload is a potential complications and air embolism.